In today's video, we're gonna look at the ways we stay on top of tire air pressure, how we protect our tires from UV, and also a little deeper dive into some of the electrical systems of the RV. Okay, as part of this travel day video, I wanted to share a little more about the electrical aspects of the RV. We pointed out before that most RV parks come with this pedestal that will have a 50 amp, a 30 amp, and a couple one or two 20 amp ports. And in our case, the rig runs at 50 amps. So we plug in here. It's always recommended to have the switch turned off before you plug in and before you unplug. So have it off, plug or unplug, and then turn it on. The 30 amp we use to power the, the lights in our trailer and the power outlets in there, as well as sometimes charge the car. And then in this case, they're using this to run a heater to keep the water from freezing. So then our power cord is uh, handled by this spool of cable here. There's a button on top that it's motorized. It'll reel that in for me. So it's really convenient when it's time to unplug and put that cord away so typically we're plugged in like this it's super convenient everything can run off of that if we ever don't have power there is a generator included it can be started from out here it can be started from the driver's seat or it can be started from the touch panels inside that you've seen before it's an 8000 watt generator it can run the whole house it would charge the batteries and uh, run all the systems so uh, this would be a case of if we didn't have power or if we're going down the road and it's super hot we need to run the air conditioners or whatever so that system taps into the main hundred gallon fuel tank for the entire RV so it does not have a separate fuel source and then we did pay for a solar prep on this guy we didn't add the solar panels yet but part of that means the solar input is here if we had solar panels that are on the ground they could be uh, cabled into that and provide power that would charge the batteries uh, that we have and then on top of the rig I won't go up there but up top there is a uh, solar input uh, or a solar a port for solar cables to be routed from the roof down into the rest of the rest of the uh, electrical uh, locations of the RV so that's a little deeper dive into the entirety of RV power. Uh, we plug in most of the time. We have a generator for backup if needed. Uh, there's even a feature on the generator called AGS. It automatically turns the generator on. Um, if that feature is enabled, then if this power were to drop for any reason, the uh, AGS within 30 seconds will start this guy up. And then if the power is restored, it turns that off. So the main use case we see for that is if you have pets in your RV and you have the air conditioner running and it's going to be super hot, and you're gonna be gone for a while, you might wanna have the generator backing up the shore power in case of a power outage so that your pet does not cook if the, if the power goes down, so. Another piece of the electrical puzzle in this thing is the batteries. So there are four currently uh, house batteries, these front four behind that, they're hard to see, but there's two chassis batteries back here for starting the engine and running the truck so there's a cool feature where on the console you can push a button and actually jump the truck batteries with the house batteries so i suppose that'd be convenient there's a lever here to be able to pull this tray out so you can um these are maintenance free and uh, but if you wanted to change them out and stuff it's nice that that's a a nice metal tray there that could slide out for for accessing those and then the other the other piece of that is this uh, master control switch for the house battery and then the inverter master switch. So beyond the power cord and the pedestal and everything else I showed you, the batteries are key and this inverter is pretty important. It's what takes the, uh, the batteries are DC and the house is AC. So the split second that the house loses outside power this system's already running, nothing even blinks. It's just seamless. The refrigerator stays on. So when we're going down the road, this inverter and those batteries are what keep the air conditioners, um, well, the air conditioners wouldn't run. The fridge would stay on 
um, any lights and stuff like that. Uh, the router stays on, so we have Wi-Fi going down the road. Uh, if we wanted to run the air conditioner, if you needed to, like I mentioned before, you'd run the generator for that uh, extra boost of power. But this inverter is key to the batteries being able to power the house. And then when we do a solar upgrade someday, this would probably be replaced with one that has more capacity and different capabilities. One of the things we've added to prolong the life of stuff, protecting our tires, is uh, these UV covers. So we have these on the trailer as well as the motorhome. Come up and show you this one. What we're told, I don't remember if I've mentioned this before, we've been told that basically since we don't drive this, you know, six, seven days a week and 11 hours a day, that will never wear out the tread. These will age out. So five to seven years-ish. Um, they'll just have to be replaced due to age. But um, UV is the enemy of rubber. So um, these rubber tires need some sort of UV protection. And we've seen lots of different ones. I really like the way these look from a distance. Some of them look like big brown bags that slip over and whatnot. This one just has these uh, three one, two, three, that you just slip over and attach. On windy days, these would blow away without that. So one of the caveats to these for us is the, uh, the RV sits up on, uh, sits up considerably higher when it's running because the chassis, I don't understand the air system and the chassis and the engine all that well, but this lowers significantly when we release the air from the system. Uh, so when we first get to a new location, we put these on, these back tire ones on, before we let the air out. We let the air out so that the jacks don't have to go as far down to level. And we found that these are very difficult to put on, impossible actually, um, when the bus is down like it is now. So there's a button on the console. You push that when you're all set and this thing lowers several inches. And, um, and again, that's to keep the jacks from having to extend super far. Um, so UV protection on the tires. And then I don't have them on there, but we have pool noodles, uh, black pool noodles I found on Amazon. So we don't have pink and purple all over this thing. But um, not that there's anything wrong with pink and purple. I've already taken them off because we tend to forget them to last minute, but we put some protection on the windshield wiper blades as well, just to try to help them last a little longer. Another piece for safety and uh, travel day prep is tires. We have 10 tires, six on the motorhome. There's uh, two back here on each side, four total, and, and you know one on each side of the front. So six total tires on this guy, and then of course four tires on the trailer. And so I typically use just this basic um, tire pressure monitor or uh, gauge to go around and check the tire pressure. One of the caveats to this is these big truck tires, as you might see. Look at that stem, it points inward. And then the back tire is visible through here just barely. So those are a booger to reach. So what I've done is uh, one of my favorite YouTubers recommended this guy. So this goes on our, on our uh, hose here for the tank and it's got this adapter on the end. So I can push this past and pull onto the end of that stem. And then the nifty thing is it's got a readout. So it makes the job super fast. Um, when this guy is aired up and this is connected and this is connected to the valve stem, you squeeze this trigger here and it releases air. And as long as you're pressing that on the valve stem, when you let go, this reads out and tells you the pressure. Otherwise you have to pull this off, put this back on it, read it back and forth, back and forth. This guy, uh, it probably cuts the time in half of being able to buzz around, check the tire pressures and air up if needed. So. One of the daily, uh, one, one of the tasks the day before, maybe a few days before even sometimes is just checking tire pressures, make sure we're safe. Um, I did notice one time uh, half, the sunny side was warmer, obviously the shady side was cooler and the pressure was a few pounds different consistently across the whole, the whole shady side versus the sunny side. So I've learned to account for that and not worry about it. And related to the air, managing air. I had that compressor because we had it at the house and it rides okay in the trailer. And I'll admit that I don't know the truck details of this thing very well. I know it's a Cummins engine, 6.7 liter, six speed automatic, and a Freightliner chassis and an Allison transmission. But beyond that, I'm pretty lost. I've had 
engine experts walk by and ask questions, you know, what's that got in it? And then once they get past that, I'm like, I'm out. I don't know. I found a sticker on top one time to answer one guy. I want to know how many horsepower it was. So it's 360, I think, if I remember right. But there's a sticker on top center up there, top of that red part that gives you more specs and stuff. But because I think of the Freightliner piece and the air system that I mentioned before, when you air this thing up, it, it raises the house up and um, for going down the road. And we've seen it before somewhere in here. I can't find it right now. I looked and looked. There's an actual spigot just like this built into this guy. So there's an actual air compressor functionality built into the engine just due to the nature of the, the air brakes and the air chassis and blah, blah, all that stuff. So it comes with a long hose and you can actually use it to air up tires if you had to. The, the trick is once we park it and we release that air, you can't use it that way. So for us to use uh, that compressor, so to speak, we'd have to have the engine running and that would raise raise the house and that would uh, lift the jacks and anyway so it's just been easier to use our little portable guy I air it up and walk around with the tires being 110 psi for these and 80 for the trailer uh, it certainly takes keeping this guy plugged in and uh, refilling constantly to keep up with even just adding a few pounds per tire if that's needed so another uh, travel day prep prep task Today, a little bonus, I went into a car wash. This thing got rained on and, and dirty, so found a little car wash nearby and shined it up. So we'll put this in the garage soon and and uh, get it strapped down and be ready for tomorrow morning to be as short as possible. Today is Friday, April 7th, and we're coming to the end of our two weeks here in Wichita. We've managed to fill almost every evening with family and friends. One night, we actually had 20-some people come together at one of the houses and have dinner with us. and together and that was just super fun it's it's a big part of uh, what we wanted to see happen as we travel like this and and it's working so far so so far so good we'll just keep trying to do that we're doing some of the travel day prep stuff now um, getting ready to uh, go tomorrow morning early we like to leave at 7 a.m. as you may know they'll give us a four or five hour drive get to Omaha early afternoon uh, we've enjoyed this park the the rows behind me here are the one-nighters so um, this time of year apparently they are there are lots of people traveling from the south back to the north so at about one or about seven or eight nine o'clock in the morning those clear out typically and then by uh, one two three four o'clock they start rolling in you know for the next batch of people so I asked them if it was always this busy because it was staying full a lot and they said yeah just this time of year and again in the fall when people are heading back south they get really well, it's a it's a nice spot um, it's concrete on the ground we have typically typically been on gravel out in Arizona area but this is fine too um, it's level it's quiet it's just close enough to 135 and 235 in Wichita to get around quickly and easily but um, we don't hear the road noise which is great I can hear it in the distance but we don't hear it inside at all so that's a that's always welcome so uh, what else we'll finish packing up a little bit more this evening we'll put the car in the trailer here in just a little bit we'll dump the gray and the black and rinse the black tank out and <clears throat> disconnect all the the water and the dump hose and that kind of stuff the only thing connected overnight is going to be the trailer on the back like last time and and also the big power cord to keep the house powered up and then we'll we'll uh, unplug that in the morning just before we go yeah, this is the last few minutes in Wichita. We've just done all of our last minute safety checks. Slides are all in. When the headlights are on, there's some nifty uh, LED lights on the trailer. So that lets people see us with all our 67 feet of goodness here. So we're getting ready to drive the next few hours. We had a good travel day. We're in Nebraska. We're at our new site. So we just got things set up we're in the process of uh, getting level now and and um, it's gonna be a good stay we're on the far end of the campground so we have fields behind us here that's nice very few uh, there's some neighbors there but the spots right here next to us are, are empty I know they're very cool this place stays uh, it stays for the whole summer at least I-80 is on the other side of the park fortunately we're on the far side of the park from I-80 but um, outside we can hear it hopefully inside we won't hear it too bad but again we've we've learned to tune that out so uh, we made it 
we hope to uh, have a great time seeing family and friends here while we're staying here.